Okay, so we're going to look at activity 3.2.2, which is about loads. And it starts with once an architectural program has been devised and a preliminary structural system has been chosen, the structural engineer may begin the process to design the structural elements. This requires that the engineer identify the design loads for each structural element. And once the applied design loads have been determined, the loads then can be traced throughout the structure so that the loads are included in the design of each element through which the loads will travel. So in this activity, we're going to be determining the design loads for the roof of a high school in a suburb of Chicago, Illinois. There's an enrollment of 2,500 students and you need that number. So keep that one in mind. And you're going to select uh, appropriate roof joists, which are beams, based upon the loads that are going to be transferred to the joists. And this is the roof plan for the school right here. So you'll need to refer back to that at some point in time. Here's all the stuff you're going to need. I should have got that all included in your package that was given to you. So procedure. So we are going to calculate the design loads for the roof, and then we're going to choose a roof deck to carry the loads. Then we're going to chase the loads to the roof beams, the joists, and then based on the uniform beam loading, you will then choose an open web steel joist that can carry the applied beam loading. Criteria. The low slope roof must be constructed of a steel roof deck with five inches of rigid insulation and a built up roof. They are shorten that down to BUR. You're going to assume a double span based on cost comparisons for this project for the roof deck. Note that a double span simply means that the deck is cut so that it continuously spans from one beam over the top of a second and ends at the third support beam. So you can look back at the roof plan to see that. The roof will support a mineral fiberboard suspended ceiling. The roof will support mechanical, electrical, and plumbing equipment that is referred to as MEP. Or a little later in the problem, you might also see that referred to as PEM. Uh, you can assume that there's going to be a 10 PSF pounds per square foot uh, factor for all of that equipment. And the building is located in an urban environment surrounded by other buildings. So we need to know that for our exposure factor for our uh, snow calculations here, snow load calculations. So what we're going to do first, this is the first thing right here, is we are going to calculate the load, snow loads, for this low slope flat roof. For this structure, we're going to use the following coefficients. CE, whoops, right here. That's the exposure factor. We're going to uh, make that value one because we're going to we're assuming that it's in an urban, suburban area surrounded by other buildings, such that the building is partially exposed to the wind. CT, which is the thermal factor is uh, going to be one because we assume that the building is heated and it does lose some heat through the roof. And then CS, which is the slope factor of the roof, is one because it is a low slope roof. So I'm going to uh, go to the camera. And what I want you to do is I want you to set See if I can get this all on the screen at one time. It's close. Uh, I have this on opposite pages here, and it's probably a good idea to do that for yourself. So I'm going to pause, and I'm going to let you set your uh, pages up to look just like this. We've got the importance factor table that is in the package. We have this small map. I think it's the last page. Uh, right here that you can cut out and this is the snow load for Chicago Illinois and you can see I put a, a dot on it because that's right about where Chicago Illinois is and I just put Chicago down here and you'll notice that the uh, 
design snow load, the ground snow load is 25 for this. Sorry, it's not the design one. That's the ground snow load is a value of 25 because it's in this band right here. And then on here also, I have the structural occupancy with risk category table. So uh, on the right hand side, I wrote down uh, these values uh, for uh, the different numbers that are going to go into our formula, which is right down here. So we're going to run through how to do this calculation for the design snow load. Uh, for this high school that's in the suburb of Chicago, and remember we have 2,500 students enrolled in this school. We're going to use all the information that we've gotten off of the problem uh, and put it into the formula. So the first thing is CS, and that is the roof slope factor, and that's how much the pitch is of the roof. That was given to us back here in our uh, problem, and that is a CS is going to be a value of 1. So I'm going to... Up here, I'm going to write down CS, that's equal to 1. Okay, now next up, that is going to be multiplied by the exposure factor, CE. And remember, we said that uh, in the problem, I believe it was, let's go back to that for a moment. We're going to note we should see that uh, CE here is uh, going to be a value of one because it's in a suburban area surrounded by other uh, buildings. So CE is going to be equal to one right there. Then we're going to be multiplying that by the thermal factor, which is CT. And CT, again, this was in the problem is right here, this is the CT value. They gave it to us as one. So CT is going to be equal to one. And then next thing we need to do is we are going to need to look at the importance factor. Now, the building importance factor is uh, based on this table that's over here on the right hand side. And there are four categories. Uh, I can't really show you all four of them at the same time. I can get pretty close. But anyways, and you're going to use that number right there up here with the importance factor up here. So if you have a building that has an importance factor of 1, you're going to put in for IS the value 0.8. For a two building, you're going to have a factor of 1, 3, 1.1, so on and so forth. Now, you'll notice that it talks about different kinds of structures. A category 1 building is things like agricultural facilities, temporary facilities, minor storage facilities. Those have an importance factor of 1. That's why that value is 0.8. It's actually less than uh, a 1. Uh, number 2 are buildings and other structures. Uh, that are not listed in the category three and four values right down here. So buildings numbers three, uh, these are buildings that if something happened and there were humans in them, there would be a horrible uh, tragedy. Those uh, buildings are things that have a primary occupancy of 300 people or more. Uh, buildings and structures like elementary schools, secondary schools, daycare facilities with occupant loads greater than 250 people. Remember, we have 2,500. So, so far, this category right here, three, is looking like uh, the kind of category that we want to be in. Uh, and then you can read through uh, education facilities like colleges and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, power generating stations such as that. And then number four, it's off the screen, but you can see it on your own page. Uh, hospitals, fire rescue, ambulances, police stations, stuff like that. Those are category four buildings. Um, those are just some examples. So we have uh, with our building an occupancy of 2,500 students, and this is a high school 
So I R I S, and we're going to take this as a category three right here. So I'm going to go up to category three and see that I S is going to be 1.1. V equals 1.1 right there. The next thing is the ground snow load uh, factor. And that ground snow load factor is going to come from this picture right here. And you're going to see 25. And you just trace this along. And this band uh, is right here. This is where Chicago is on uh, the map. And that has that is in the 25 uh, zone. So we're going to have a uh, ground snow load factor of 25. Now, we're going to bring all of these down into our uh, table. So our PS, which is the ground snow load, is going to be equal to 0 0.7 times CS, which is 1, times CE, which is going to be 1, times uh, CP, which is also 1, times 1.1, times 25, which is the ground snow load factor. So, we get out of our calculator, and if we do the calculation here, so we have 0.7 times, and we're going to skip all of these ones here, 1.1 .1 times 25, and that is going to equal 19.25 TSF, pound per square foot. So the next thing I'm going to write in my notebook is right here, and this is minimum snow load. That, this is coming from this slide right here, uh, and I just copied this formula down right there. I'll go back to my handwritten one. So the minimum snow load, if PG, and that's right here, is less than or equal to 20 pounds per square foot, then your PS, which is the design snow load, is going to be greater than or equal to the IS times PG. Now, if your PG, again, this right here, is greater than, P, P, uh, than oh shoot, I think I got that set up wrong. Greater than 20, whoops, forgot the 20 there, sorry. My mistake. That's a that's 20 right there. So if VG is equal to or uh, I'm sorry, greater than 20 PSF, which is the problem we have here. We're at 25, we're so we're greater than 20, 20. Then your PS, which is the design snow load, is going to be uh, greater than or equal to IS times 20. So we're going to use this formula right here. Okay. So we're going to do our PS which is our design snow load, is going to be equal to IS, the importance factor, 1.1 times 20. So I take uh, my value here, which is, uh, I'm sorry, hold on a second. I thought for a moment there I had uh, incorrectly written this formula down, but I got it right. It's 1.1, which is the importance factor, times 20. So if I take, I'm going to cancel this out right here. If I take 1.1 times 20, I'm going to have a value of 22. So this is 22 PSF for my uh, snow load factor.